being happy it is actually one of the most powerful things that you can do not allowing yourself to go down that rabbit hole of stress effort is in related to the release of epinephrine of adrenaline in our brain and body at some point those levels get so high that we get stressed mentally we get stressed physically and we want to give up it's and there's a, a quit point dopamine the molecule of pursuit and reward and feeling good resets our ability to be in effort i mean this sounds kind of new agey but happiness joy and pleasure in what you're doing creates a chemical milieu that provides more of the chemicals that allow for effort. A couple of things for optimizing workspace that are grounded in neuroscience and physiology. So body posture and whether or not you're upright or reclining will impact your levels of alertness in the predictable ways. And when our eyes are directed upward, it creates a state of heightened alertness. And this has a relationship to the brainstem neurons that create alertness and their control over the muscles of the eye and believe it or not the eyelids the point here is that you can optimize your workstation in a physical way that leverages this aspect of the visual system and your level of alertness try and position your screen or your tablet whatever device you happen to be working on at least at eye level and ideally slightly higher if you think about it, most people are not doing this. Most people are looking down at their computer or tablet. That is not going to support heightened states of alertness and optimal attention. In fact, the opposite relationship between eye position and alertness is also true. When we look down, when our eyelids are slightly closed, it tends to decrease our levels of alertness and increase our levels of sleepiness, especially if you're somebody who tends to have that mid-morning sleepiness or mid-morning crash. The brain is going through these 90-minute so-called ultradian cycles throughout the entire day and night. Every 90 minutes, we shift over from being very alert to being less alert and then back to alert. There will be kind of peaks and valleys within that but that 90 minutes is about what the brain can handle in terms of a dedicated effort for high degree of focus. I set a timer for 90 minutes and I try and get a strong bout of work done inside of that 90 minutes with the full understanding that the entire 90 minutes is not going to be uniform in terms of my ability to focus. You'd be amazed how much you can get done in 90 minutes if you are focused. So that means no checking the markets, no checking social media, no checking, uh, you know, the, the news, no checking email, none of that. Okay, so the goal is to get into what I call the tunnel, to really get into a tunnel of quality work. It's extremely common nowadays to see people texting and doing selfies and communicating in various ways, listening to podcasts, listening to music, doing all sorts of things while they engage in other activities or going to dinner and texting other people or making plans, sharing information. Because as you all know, the moment you sit down to do some serious work and you flip off the internet, all of a sudden it's as if the phone has a voice. It starts calling you. It's almost as if the restroom has a voice. But we all are familiar with the fact that if we are focused on something, that we, all that just kind of melts away. That's the mentality that I've embedded in myself, that there, there's nothing more important than what I'm doing in that 90 minute block. And that's what works for me. The brain loves that state, but it's very hard for many of us to access. Well, there are a couple of tools that neuroscience and psychology tell us can be very beneficial. Some of those things are somewhat intuitive and relate to what I call foundational practices, meaning things that set the overall tone in your body and brain. It turns out that white noise, which is essentially all frequencies of sound, mixed up kind of randomly, there's no structure to it, turned on at a low volume, not with headphones most of the time, puts the brain into a state that's optimal for learning and workflow. Brain areas involved in attention, brain areas involved in focus and cognition and memory, those are engaged to a greater degree when there is low levels of white noise playing in the background. I'm a big believer based on quality peer reviewed data that hydration is essential for mental performance. I force myself essentially to drink at least 16 and most days 32 ounces of water. I also put a little bit of sea salt in the water. As many of you know, neurons require ionic flow. What that means is neurons need sodium, they need magnesium, and they need potassium in order to function. There are activities that we can do that will give us healthy, sustained increases in dopamine, both 
the peaks when they happen and to maintain or even increase our baseline levels of dopamine. This process of taking a walk each morning isn't about exercise. It's not about burning calories. It's not about any of that. When we generate our own forward motion, forward ambulation, visual images pass by us on our eyes, so-called optic flow. Forward ambulation, walking or biking or running and generating optic flow in particular has this incredible property of lowering activity in the amygdala and thereby reducing levels of anxiety. Get it. into a mode of forward ambulation and especially experiencing visual flow has a powerful effect on the nervous system. So that's remarkable to me and the literature is really robust, but the level of dopamine is the primary determinant of how motivated we are, how excited we are, how outward facing we are and how willing we are to lean into life and pursue things. How much dopamine is in our system at any one time compared to how much dopamine was in our system a few minutes ago and how much we remember enjoying a particular experience of the past that dictates your so-called quality of life and your desire to pursue things. If ever you've interacted with somebody who just doesn't seem to have any drive, they've given up or if you've interacted with somebody who seems to have endless drive and energy, what you are looking at there in those two circumstances is without question, a difference in the level of dopamine circulating in their system. In its optimal range, adrenaline really provides a heightened sense of focus and the ability to encode, meaning bring in and retain, remember information. Fasting increases levels of adrenaline to create this heightened state of alertness, yet calm brain state. It tends to increase our levels of alertness. It tends to bring an animal or a human into a state of more alertness, readiness, and desire to pursue things outside the confines of its skin. We learn better, we can focus better. There's terrific data supporting that. Hard work is hard. Generally, most people don't like working hard. Some people do, but most people work hard in order to achieve some end goal. When we receive... Even if we give ourselves rewards for something, we tend to associate less pleasure with the actual activity itself that evoked the reward. Now that might seem counterintuitive, but that's just way the, the way that these dopaminergic circuits work. And I suggest people do whatever they need to in order to self-regulate that activity. Because of the way that dopamine relates to our perception of time, working hard at something for sake of a reward that comes afterward can make the hard work much more challenging 
and make us much less likely to lean into hard work in the future. We are incredibly habitual organisms. Unless we intervene in our habits, they tend to carry out the same way that they always have once they've formed. This has been observed over and over and over again that people that have growth mindset, kids that have growth mindset, end up performing very well because they're focused on the effort itself. And all of us can cultivate growth mindset. The neural mechanism of cultivating growth mindset involves learning to access the rewards from effort and doing. But I really try and achieve this most, if not every day that I'm alive, because for me, that work session is kind of holy. It's where I, can, where I set up a relationship, not just between me and the work that I'm doing, but between me and my ability to control my own state of mind. I'm creating this space. I'm funneling my brain into a state rather than allowing whatever events and contexts on social media and elsewhere might be occurring in the world that would yank me out of what for me is my purpose.